Hey, what's going on, peeps? Here from Frankfurt, Germany, and I am uh, just signing on, and I had a question pop up in my inbox, and I wanted to share it with you, uh, lovely peeps who are tuning in, if this just kind of came across your news feed or you're watching on replay. What is up? My name is Dr. Nima Romani, and I am a transitional anxiety coach, former chiropractor, actually still am. You know, I still practice as a chiropractor, but for the past 16 years, feeling frustrated that patients have been coming in with the same problems, stress and anxiety. And I was seeing them with chronic health problems on the other side of their emotional issues and feeling this frustration creating these workshops slowly over the last 10 years have transitioned myself from my chiropractic practice into doing this full time. Currently, I'm traveling in Germany, taking more personal development, uh, schooling and training so that I can be better for my clients, my team, my business, my my family, everybody. So what is transitional anxiety? I wanted to share this with you. Please let me know where you're signing in from. If you have been tuning in, if you've seen me for the first time, you've never seen one of my uh, live broadcasts before, or you have, let me know so I can give you a shout out. Um, very important topic because uh, I believe that anxiety is one of the most common uh, causes, root causes of all chronic health problems. In fact, one of my good friends uh, who is an ER physician, basically told me that he he said that he's lost faith in the medical system. I said, why? I mean, we, I've lost faith in a long time ago. Why is it, why have you lost faith? He said, and he said about 70% of the cases that come in, even in his ER, are anxiety related disorders. Let me tell you, let me repeat that. About 70% of the problem of why you're going to the doctor, there is an anxiety related root cause. And I know this all too well because I, you know, when I graduated chiropractic school, I was plagued by it, starting from going from my schooling into the world of chiropractic. And I remember the first two years of practice, I couldn't sleep at night. This is one of the hallmark um, kind of symptoms of transitional anxiety. If you're having a tough time sleeping, if you're feeling chest pains and feeling like you want to panic, if you are feeling like you are isolating, wanting to isolate yourself from other people, um, if you feel like you don't know where you want to turn, you're feeling like you're inauthentic, you feel like you're drifting, you don't know who you are, you feel uncomfortable in your own skin, you feel like you're looking at other people, putting on a mask, pretending to be somebody that you're not, or you don't know who the hell that is, chances are you're dealing with transitional anxiety. If you are in a relation, and this inauthenticity is causing you to um, not show up as the real version of you in a relationship, and you are now in a point of maybe one year, two years, or like some of my clients, decades in a relationship and wondering, should, should I stay or should I go? Um, if you are finding that you want to sedate yourself by numbing yourself with alcohol, drugs, or even affairs, if you feel like you're having affairs, that you think that you can, you, this lack of, lack of inauth this inauthentic way of being, that you find that in a relationship outside of your current partner, that you can't be real and express yourself because of fear, what would other people think of you? What would other people think of me? You know, I, I'm afraid of being disapproved of. You could be going through transitional anxiety. And transitional anxiety that I've noticed, because I've gone through it myself, going through a divorce, going through breakups, and going through a transition in my career is, is really uh, characterized by this feeling of, should I stay or should I go? And will I be okay? And I want to kind of you know, point out that I've been dealing with this big challenge since, since I've moved into the world of coaching of what, who is it that I help? You know, every coach that I've worked with has been like, all right, so what's your niche? What do you help? And I'm like, well, anybody who's going through, you know, any challenge is like, well, that's not enough. Uh, tell us specifically, you know, moms over 41 who have had, you know, uh, who are overweight. Okay. That's a specific 
niche or business people who are uh, dealing with a health crisis. Okay, that's another specific niche. Well, for me, I can help all of those people. And what I discovered in this journey of looking for my targeted niche was that I help people who are stressed, depressed, and anxious, who are going through transitional anxiety from one place to another and feeling that pain of, will I be okay? So I've discovered the way to actually tra transform it. So if those symptoms that I mentioned earlier resonate with you, there's good news because you can actually change it. And I, I know because I've gone through it and I know what it's like to actually have horrific anxiety and not really um, be able to breathe. Uh, constantly compare yourself to other people and beat yourself up and look at, um, you know, and, and look at the work that I'm doing compared to what I used to do or what I think I should be doing. Um, using my tools though, Christina, yes. Vancouver in the house, never get tired of this education. It's, it's good to see you, Christina and uh, Jen, Jennifer. Um, so basically, I want to pinpoint three case studies that I've, I've used with clients of mine that might resonate with you because you could find yourself or see yourself in them and then be able to actually get the help you need and then have the tools to be able to transform it. So the first one um, is a... a financial advisor that I've been working with. And he has had a tough time because his wife just recently quit her job. She said, I quit. I can't do this anymore. I want to focus on the family and the kids. And he took it upon himself to say, okay, I really want to up, up level my financial advising business. When he reached out to me, he said that he feels fear uh, in this transition in his family because he's afraid of picking up the phone and calling and making calls with people and setting up appointments so that he could go over financial uh, advising. Um, hey, Loriana. Um, and so what we did was the first and first and foremost thing that we did in order for you to help yourself get through transitional anxiety, uh, you have to stop lying about who you are, what story you're making. Absolutely. That's one big part of it. The first thing that we do, however, is to make a declaration of a mission statement and to know exactly what your values are. While you're going through this transition in this limbo state, if you don't identify what your values are and you don't make a declaration of a mission, of a purpose, a cause that is greater than your current reality and you make it about you, what happens is you make everything about you. If you don't do that, if you don't get that part right, you're making everything about you. So will they accept me? Do I look good? Am I being right? All of these obsessions of looking good, being right, and, and, and being approved of block our power and our freedom to step up and serve at a greater level. Tara, right now you're transitioning into helping people who overcome their story with cancer. If you don't declare a mission statement each day and and put your focus on who you would love to be for these people, what you'd love to do and what you'd love to have in exchange through your mission statement. You will have a tendency, you, I'm saying you, but me, I'm saying all of us, it's not just you. <laughs> Dr. Nima's stuff really does work. I suffer from severe depression and anxiety after doing the work. I'm now on the way to living full life. Awesome. God bless you. And this is what we did with you and what we did with everybody else, even though you're not one of my case studies, but we have used you as a case study, Tara. Thank you for your interview that we did. Check out my thing to see Tara's interview on uh, anxiety. She was vomiting every single week with, with anxiety. And now um, the only time she vomits is if, you know, it was warranted. Um, <laughs> so Mission statement, If you, when you get this right, you wake up and you have taken an empty and meaningless life, which truthfully, if we don't declare what it is, life can be empty and meaningless, and we've a, a tethered some sort of a meaning to it. And then what ends up happening is we now know we have purpose behind each step. We can decide who we're being when we're interacting with other people, especially our friends and our family, who can sometimes, quite frankly, push our buttons as we push theirs. Um, that's basically what happens. And so creating a mission statement and knowing your values is critical. And once we did that with this 
client of mine. He's now been, uh, we've been working with him for just a couple months and his income has gone up. And now he has no longer any fear about picking up the phone because he knows who he's doing this for. He knows that people are lucky to be able to work with him. And who he's showing up as is now what he's done. He just reported this to me today. Every year he creates a, 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 a a mastermind group for new financial advisors. And he brings in a big shot speaker to talk about the world of becoming successful at financial advising. Guess who he is inviting as a speaker this year? Himself, himself, not because of ego, but because he finally got that what he has to share now is so valuable to other people because he literally got this. He's got no problems picking up the phone and, and closing deals because he's not closing deals. He's actually realizing that what he's doing is, which is almost unseen in the financial advising world, which is about closing sales, is really about helping other people uh, transform that. Absolutely, Chad. He, he, he's hiring himself to actually do that. And through the work that we've done, by getting that mission statement done. The case study number two is um, this chiropractor that I've been working with who was stuck and depressed and anxious in transitional anxiety, not knowing where he wanted to go. He was unfulfilled in his current job. Maybe let me know if that, you know, if that uh, resonates with you. If you feel like you're in your job, you feel like there's something greater for you, um, this is basically what we do. Not only did we first assign his mission statement, and after his first 30 days, he messaged me and he was like, okay, so what the, what the F's going on? Um, I'm having the biggest, highest producing month of my chiropractic career. Tell me it's not because like, how could it be because of this stuff that we're doing? It's so simple. I just created a mission statement. I, I assigned some morning rituals that I connect to it each and every day. And also, you know, you know, what gives, what's going on. And that was really before we really got started in the meat of the work. And he had a huge month, his, his biggest grossing month. And uh, what, what ends up happening is the next part, the second thing that you need to do, as Tara mentioned, is that you have to stop lying about uh, the stories that you've been making in your life. And the stories, which are stories of resentment and regret, so the two things that you have, if you're in transitional anxiety and you're in this limbo state, and you don't know where the heck you want to go. You're dealing with resentment and regret that's been unresolved, often guilt towards yourself. In Tara's case, there was a, quite a bit of guilt that we had to unpack and resentment. Oh, my goodness. Story between mom, story of dad, story of so-and-so. And, you know, take all of the list of things. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a list of all of the resentments and regrets that you've gone through. I shouldn't have gotten, I, I did a Facebook live post about this yesterday. Uh, shouldn't have gotten an abortion. I should, you know, dad shouldn't have left. Um, you know, my parents shouldn't have gotten divorced. All of the things, all of the mistakes that you made, I shouldn't have cheated on so-and-so person. All of the things, the mistakes that you've made and the, the so-called mistakes that other people have made, especially your parents towards you that you feel resentful or regretful about, write them down. Actually, I encourage you to send me a private message. Message, I'd love to chat with you about it. Um, these require unpacking. If you're stuck in transitional anxiety, you want to get to the next level. If you, if you get this, if by you not getting this right, you can't see what's next because you're so in a fog of emotional charge. You've heard the term in charge. Who's in charge of you? When you have resentment towards another person, it's a fog of resent, a, a cloud that blocks you from being able to see what your next powerful move is supposed to be. And someone else is in charge of you. That charge can be the guilt that you're having. And so it's critical that you take a good look at what that is. And so by getting this right, what opens up for you is a sense of freedom. All of a sudden, you feel worthy. That feeling of I'm not worthy of making that, that leap ahead, which we all have to deal with. I had to deal with the, the worthiness of, oh, my God, am I worthy to make this Facebook Live post? Am I worthy? I'm a chiropractor. Am I worthy? 
to be talking about anxiety? I mean, am I qualified? I could hear the, all of the naysayers and the critics. Well, you're not qualified. You're not a psychiatrist. You're not a psychologist. Well, no, I've, I'm, a, I'm actually a, a former sufferer of anxiety and depression, and I know exactly what it what it entails. And I've worked through it, and I've I've unpacked it and the wisdom that I've gotten, not only from working on it through myself, but actually helping hundreds of people through the same issues. It has been, I feel more valuable than going to a doctor and taking a pill. That's not going to, that's not going to solve it. In fact, it's actually going to make it worse because you're going to be convinced that you have a disorder. If you get this wrong, you're going to go to the wrong person. They're going to give you a pill or a therapy that you keep repeating your bullshit story of lies um, it's not helping you. It's keeping you stuck and disempowered. Whereas by unpacking the resentment and regret, you empower yourself. You open your heart to love that you've been blocking all of these years from your mother, your father, your brother, your whoever. And all of a sudden your, your disconnection is replaced with love and you start showing up as a different version of yourself. Hey, Randy, what's up, brother, man? You start showing up as a more powerful version of yourself. It requires an unpacking. If you don't get that right, that resentment and regret, what we do is we tend to want to sedate ourselves instead of dealing with the real issue. And so when we did that, um, this chiropractor, we cleared all of that, got him connected with a mission statement. He now completed all of his past resentments from his relationships and got restored integrity with all of them. And basically, you know, he, he now is deep, more deeply connected in his relationship than he ever has been. And he had an honest conversation with his employer and now got a raise. And he literally got a 35% raise and he's in the works, in the, in, in, in the works of actually now creating his own business. So he went from being stuck in that transition to healing his whole past, telling the truth with all of his relationships and getting complete with all of them, getting a raise. And now he's now moving forward and ready to, you know, make a big impact, which his inspired mission was to help people get off of opioids, which was really inspiring to him because he could see how this was a major problem. But before he did the work, he was all about him and what he was not doing and I'm not good enough and all those stories by, by not getting that right. And my last uh, case study that I want to share with you with transitional anxiety, um, she uh, is a coach that helps uh, many people who are, you know, to find their, their highest versions of themselves. And she had gone through the death of her mother, some major challenges with her, her uh, son and family. Uh, there was major chaos that happened that forced her out of work and into taking care of the crises that were going on in the family, has a husband that travels for work. So she just had this shit storm of a life going on. And what, she, what we did was I took her through this transitional anxiety. I took her through the exact, here's the crazy part. This is not a treatment for it, but it is, it is the solution. And it's the same for everyone. Got her connected with a mission statement, cleared all of those resentful stories of her past, of recent past, got her to restore integrity with all the relationships within her family dynamic. And now she has a family dynamic that is more cohesive than it ever has been. She's got a mission and a purpose that is stronger and more clear and connected than ever. And now she's making money again. She was broke when we first started. She, you know, was at her wits end and actually was contemplating suicide. And now she is stronger than ever. And her family is stronger than ever. And she's a stand for all, not only her family, but the clients that need her because she's basically recognized her, her superpower, which is hero, heroism, which when people are running out of the burning building, she's the type to run in. And she didn't see that before. And through these, this process, um, she was able to do that. So we had the financial advisor going through transitional anxiety, the chiropractor and the coach, all three of these people taking through the exact same process through transitional anxiety have found their power and their freedom and self-expression again. And the key is, is that why is this important? Why do you need to know this is because you're probably in, in a, if you're stuck in a transitional anxiety state, you're probably playing a lot smaller than you uh, potentially can be. And that there's 
while you're sitting there worrying about what's not working with you, there is a world of people out there that actually need you. They need you to be the best version of yourself because their life depends on you stepping up. And that you not stepping up, you playing small is, is, is hurting lives, is actually harming, harming your family because the greatest version of you isn't showing up. Um, your clients, your patients, your staff, they don't get to see the greatest version of you because guess what? They are going through crisis too and they need you. Um, and your bank account <laughs> is suffering as a result of all of this because you don't feel that worthiness because of all of those stories and the lies. And so the one thing that they all did in common, which is what I did when I was going through transitional anxiety, and I continue to go through transition in my life, but I'm doing it with power and freedom now, and I'm not afraid. Um, I needed to hear this today, man. God bless you, Chad. Chad, it was uh, an honor meeting you at our uh, at that at that spiritual retreat. You're a wonderful human being, and you make a huge difference in other people's lives. It's just that when we're going through transitional anxiety, unfortunately, we have just made it all about us. And so, the last part that I the big difference that I that made in my life was that I reached out and I got a mentor. I got somebody who wasn't just qualified by, by, by designation because they have a PhD or an MD or a whatever. It was they've gone through it themselves. They have a proven track record of clients whose lives they have transformed. And I don't mean to brag. I'm just going to. Oh, that's quite lovely. Oh, I don't mean. Oh, there's, oh, there it is. <laughs> there. There's a proven track record and they have a heart dedicated to actually getting results. Results, what results am I talking about? Results such as knowing exactly who you are and why you were put on this earth, living powerfully and congruently within that. And number three, here's the hallmark of it. Are you feeling connected to others? Are people coming to you and feeling that your space is a space of transformation? That's how you can tell if you've done it right. If you can see people are wanting to be in your space and they are actually like calling you because they recognize that by calling you, they can get more of what they want out of life. You have, you have struck gold on planet earth because that's all this life is about. It, it is so amazing for me to have my cousins call me when they're going through crisis because they know that Nima is going to be able to give them the right tools to be able to help them. It is an honor for me that my colleagues, my mentors, I now have my mentors calling me and saying, Nima, I'm going through a divorce. My wife and I are getting a divorce and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to find myself. And it is an honor for me to participate within 30 days having that couple who are my, my mentors to get back together. That's what's actually happening. And that is a sign, that is a telltale sign that you have gained victory over your challenge. And I want that for you. I know that that's potential for you if you do the work, if you cross that bridge of fear, if you agree to go into the darkness. And I'm offering that to you. If this is something that you are looking to, if this resonates with you and you are identifying with any of the symptoms that I've mentioned and you have been sitting on the fence about taking action, I want to talk to you because um, that's my highest value is helping people really uncover what's blocking them so that they can move through their transitional anxiety with power, whether it be a career or a relationship stuckness to get their power back. Because my highest value is to see the ripple effect happened in my clients' lives, that their clients and their families and their physical bodies, they heal, their autoimmune problems get healthier, like all of that. I mean, this, this, is, this is, you know, something I haven't even mentioned, but the result of doing this work is you start to heal in your body. If you've had chronic illness, chronic pain, most of these symptoms are tied into the, these stories. And if that's what's happened and you've allowed yourself to get to that Point, it is critical that you reach out and you find somebody that's going to be able to help you connect the dots and to see that you are powerful, you are worthy, and that other people 
need you to step up. And so I only am interested in talking to people who are wanting to be leaders for others, not the victims, not the ones who want to tell me the story about how their husband is an asshole or their mom's a jerk and all of that stuff. I get it. I've been through it as well. I completely understand. This is for people who are wanting to take it on. And I'm going to offer that if you send me a private message, I would be so pleased to, to be there for you and uh, to see if this is something that's right for you. So are there any questions? I'm giving you a, a chance for a QA and a chat. I'm glad you tuned in. I'm glad that you, um, you, you, this resonated with you, Randy. I'm glad that you were there, Tara and, um, and Jen, thanks for your for participation. If you send me some, some love, some hearts, any um, questions that you have, letting me know that there's engagement or this resonated with you. If you just jumped on right now, please rewind and watch again and tag somebody that you know needs this and share this with people so that they can actually get the help that they need. God bless you. And uh, if you have no other questions, I will see you at the next perfect time. Signing off from Germany.